welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie podcast. I'm April Atmansky, and I'm here today with... Justin DeClue! And Colin Cunningham. And one of us is just a little boy! <laughs> <laughs> and I talk like this, because I'm a, I'm a legit young boy. <laughs> I'm definitely not a 40-year-old man on my knees. We are talking... I don't even think oh, he's, he's on, on his knees. I don't even think he's on his knees. I swear, there were a couple scenes where he was. Oh, a few. Oh, whoa, I think that someone has a lawsuit then. Wait, what was the name? It's like, not Gorf. What was it? Dorf. Dorf. <laughs> Dorf. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Martin Short was riding that Dorf fever. Well, we're talking about Clifford from 1994. Uh, this is a movie where, for for no apparent reason, Martin Short, a 40-year-old Martin Short, plays a 10-year-old child named Clifford. Uh, I think the reason is laughs. Yeah, yeah. the <laughs> reason is it would be funny. <laughs> and, it, and it was. I, it, it, it is. I, 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 this is one of those movies that I'm kind of reminded that it exists every few years. I'll, I'll mm. Like, oh, yeah, Clifford. Wait, did yeah, you go see it when that. it played at the Royal? No, I've never no, seen it. This is my first time. That. Oh, yeah. you guys miss it? That was yeah. the best screening because the audience was roaring with laughter as it played. <laughs> well, let's each talk about our history with this movie. Uh, Colin, you go. Had you seen it before? I've never no. seen it before. And like I was saying, you know, I keep getting reminded. I'll see something on YouTube, you know, somebody talking about it. I'm like, shit, right, Clifford. And I keep writing down movies that we should do for the podcast. So, yeah, I finally, I kept forgetting about it, but wrote it down. This mm -hmm. is my pick. Yeah, me as well. It was like buried in my subconscious <laughs> because um, I did see this as a really young child, but I didn't really remember much about it. And uh, Justin, when you played it at the Royal, which I guess was like a couple years ago now. Oh, I didn't um, play it. It was somebody else played oh, it. Oh, someone else played it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, so I was like, oh, it's coming like, it's for some reason it's back into the public like consciousness. consciousness. Yes. Clifford Mania is back. <laughs> well, at least in our circle it was, and like I, uh, I remembered. I was like, oh yeah, I saw that. And the only thing I only remembered two scenes. I remembered where Charles Grodin puts the lipstick on, um, right. and I remembered um, the roller coaster scene at the end. And in my mm -hmm. brain, it was it was Martin Short and Charles Grodin riding it together for some. Reason, okay. which doesn't that happen and i remember the vacuous void of black shadow yeah i mean my history with the film though is that i watched it with a bunch of my pals many years ago because it's an infamously uh bad movie and we wanted to give it a second shot and i remember we watched it in stony silence at the plate <laughs> like we did not that. like it at all really so i don't remember why i ended up going to see it at the royal but I did, and oh man, did I laugh and laugh and laugh. I guess maybe I was just in a bad mood when we watched it. Uh, it's quite together. possible. Everyone was I, in a bad mood. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things, like, I've watched movies that I know I like, uh, you know, with friends that just aren't jiving with it, and mm -hmm. it just kills the mood. Like, I remember watching, yeah. it's like Big Trouble in Little China, and I was showing it to friends for the first time, and they did not like it. Like, there's <laughs> a silence. Like, get out. I was actually I don't like, want to see you again. I was questioning myself, like, you know, is it a good movie? No, it's a good <laughs> movie. It, you can't am I, I wrong? No, it's the children that are wrong. When it yeah, comes but, to a comedy, you can't sit there and laugh by yourself if no one else is laughing. Yeah, but when you're with a crowd that is not into something, it can really kind of taint the experience in the movie. Yeah, what you have to do with friends is that uh, when a funny part comes up, you just stare at them, <laughs> waiting for them to laugh. Yeah, that's the perfect way to watch movies that you love. Push the button with like the applause sign. Well, I don't know. I was cracking up within 30 seconds I of starting this movie. I found this movie hilarious. And... <laughs> I guess I can understand why people wouldn't like it, but I well, kind you could of just feel... find it annoying. Like if you don't yeah. jive with it, and you're like, "What is Martin Short doing?" Yeah, but it's just like, it's, it's such an off-putting concept. I think you know if you can get past that. <laughs> I didn't find it that off-putting, but I, I understand why people would think that. Now I remember as a kid not liking it because I remembered it was just him just torturing Charles Grodin. <laughs> And, yes, and you weren't that wrong. Is, that is what happens. But now, I don't know, maybe just because I'm I'm a lot older, I've seen a lot yeah. more movies. I'm in a different place in my life. This, to me, was just like a lighthearted comedy. And it's 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 dark, but it's not insanely dark. And it's not no. crazy. But it's well, the funny. thing is, is that like Charles Grodin is reacting like a real person would yeah, to Clifford. Where exactly. he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> While everybody else is in like a family comedy. 
<laughs> they think he's delightful and wonderful. Yeah. Like, is anybody noticing that this guy's got like stubble on his chin? He's not no, ten years that's old. The, that, well, that's the joke, but that's not the only joke in the movie. For sure, yeah. It, it's not a. It, it could, you know, steer towards being a, a one joke movie. That's but apparently what Roger Ebert said about uh, it. I, I don't think I agree with that. In his half star movie uh, review, I mean. So, uh, well, you guys missed out though because at the screening that we did of Clifford, I believe on thirty five millimeter. Uh, oh, wait, I didn't do it. Uh, Brendan did of Neon mm-hmm. Dreams. I think he was the one who spearheaded that screening. Uh, he got an intro from the director Paul Flaherty. Yes, the director of uh, SCTV's Joe Flaherty. Yeah, the Joe. No, not the director brother. of the brother of. Yeah, the brother of. He did, I think, and work on on SCTV. He's what was great on is tons that his things. interview was like, I don't know why nobody liked this movie. We did our best, <laughs> <laughs> and behind him, I believe there was a copy of like I- Eisenstein's like film theory, and it's like, oh, all no. right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what does Eisenstein have to say about Clifford? Uh, yeah, but uh, I, you know, I, montage and you know the way it can impact emotionally yeah. the viewer. I, mean, I do feel like this movie is just misunderstood. Um, but again, like I can see why people wouldn't like it, but I'm watching it and I'm like, this is, a, this is hilarious. This I is amazing. Know. Yeah. I, I like Martin Short and like just, you know, within 30 Charles seconds, Grodin. I mean, Charles Grodin oh, is amazing. Treasure. He's so good at just playing somebody who's at the end of the rope and he's going to snap. <laughs> and Wait, he's... I want to talk to Colin about this because I think he's the one that probably has the most experience with Martin Short as our elder statesman. Right. Okay. You say you like Martin Short. Yeah. Everybody says they love Mar- Martin Short. Yeah. He is one of those fascinating actors who almost has no good movies to his name. It's true. Other than maybe Inner Space, mm-hmm. Three Amigos. Uh-huh. Uh, that's he pretty much funny it. And Father of the Bride. That's the one uh, that I remember yeah, him from. True. Because Father of the Bride Part 2, I think it's the one oh, that yeah, he's you're in. right. I think it's Part 2. I, I don't even know. I, I think he came back for one of the sequels as well. Uh, Jungle but, to Jungle. He's in Mars Attacks. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And I who can eat. forget Pure Luck, Martin Short and Danny <laughs> Glover together at last. I've got to be honest. I've barely seen any of those movies. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I love the three the amigos. The idea of Martin Short makes you laugh then. No, I, you know, I grew up on SCTV, so I was mm. a huge fan of his from there. And well, I was surprised to see that. Did Martin Short only land on SCTV like in the later seasons? He came later. And I think it yeah. was when they uh, eventually SCTV got picked up on an American channel and they mm-hmm. had to go to one hour. So I think there's some cast members that came on after that fact. Uh, like like he was the, on SNL, but only for like 16, 17 episodes. Yeah, yeah like a hot and, minute. And he did characters on that that were from SCTV, I believe. He just did yeah, them on Ed SNL. Yeah, Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley, yeah. yeah. Which I never really liked Ed Grimley. I don't even know. I, d- I didn't watch SCTV, unfortunately, because it wasn't available to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm sure it was funny. He just seems like a fun guy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, you're, you're a big actually, Jimmy Glick fan? <laughs> Jim, Jiminy Glick. I never watched Jiminy the Glick. Jimmy Glick show, and I... I can't say that I'm the biggest fan. Was that that like a full show? I thought it was just like oh, it online was a full it was, show. It, was a show. it lasted a long time too. Well, oh. Paul Flaherty, the director of this, uh, you know, he wrote a lot on the Tracy Ellman show, Muppets Tonight, and uh, the Martin Short show, and Jiminy Glick. So I think I feel like Jiminy Glick was one of those things that lasted so long due to the Canadian content laws. Yeah, and exactly. Like, <laughs> Comedy <laughs> Network is like, I guess we're going to play the Jiminy Glick show yeah, I, at like I, one a.m. in the morning. I have a feeling some people, a lot of people listening to this, don't even know what Jiminy Glick is. Yeah, just look up Jimmy Glick. Did he it's do a Martin movie Short too? in a fat suit? That's the whole I joke. Did. Yeah. yeah, and he interviews celebrities. Yes. Yeah. No, I don't think there was a movie, but I could be wrong. Who yes, knows? there is. Jimmy yeah. Glick and La La Land. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, there you go. Why am I? Why am I not? Surprised? You will Canadian never treasure. meet a Jiminy Glick fan. No. Like like a genuine one, other than someone that's like it was on, I guess, and I watched it. It's true. I'm aware of it. I don't know why I'm aware of it because I never watched <laughs> I it. I remember seeing him in like, <laughs> like You've been watching the. Is it Comedy Network or Comedy Channel that we have oh, in Canada? I can't remember. We have. Uh, comedy net- and network? you're like yeah, you're just know. sitting there watching like repeats of uh saturday night live from the 70s and whose line is it anyway and yeah. you're like i guess i'll watch jimmy glick that's what's on jimmy glick and then like the red green show would come up the <laughs> yeah. Time. yeah that's a that's a big one on duct the tape channel. duct tape smith that's and a smith. joke i think i only watched like a couple episodes of red green i didn't really get it no, i don't think no, i've not. ever seen a full episode of the red green show <laughs> no neither have i <laughs> no one has, just like Jiminy Glick. And that got a movie too. You just know. admitting this, we'll get our you know Canadian passports revoked. 
Yeah. Uh, listen, if they want to make a Jimmy Glick style show where we're all in fat suits and we have to do, I'd be all for it. <laughs> I have to Those say, Canadian content laws. I I heard through the grapevine that Martin Short was kind of a jerk. Now this 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 could mean nothing, but a friend <gasps> of a friend like built his cottage for him or something, which is in Ontario, and yeah. he was kind of a jerk about it. It's up in Muskoka. <laughs> he and, oh. well, he's good buddies with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn, so they all all the celebrities. have have uh, cottages up on Lake Rousseau in Muskoka. It's a very, very expensive. I think Eddie Van Halen also had a cottage up there as well. And was like Martin Short, did your friend say he like would not stop doing Clifford shtick? You're like, <laughs> oh my God, he's so annoying. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't there. Kept having everybody stand on Apple boxes. So yeah, he looks, had like a little dinosaur shady. and he's like, it wasn't me. It was oh, uh, actually, whatever his name is, Lawrence. He still has that dinosaur? Yes. What's, if I ever, what's the dinosaur's name? Stefan. Stefan. If I ever meet him, I'm going to ask him that. Yes. And <laughs> if he's I'm ever, be like, what? If, if I'm Not ever Martin repairing Short, his mean cottage. April friend? <laughs> yeah. If I ever meet uh, Stefan, I'm going to ask him that. <laughs> the dinosaur. <laughs> all right. Let's jump into the plot of this movie. Oh, the plot. Well, first of all, th- this movie, it's, you know, 1994 was the official release date, but it was shot like 1990. Yep. Yeah. It got shelved. This is the film that killed Charles Grodin's career. He would not act till, I checked, 2012 after Clifford in an episode of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Are you serious? Wait, what about the Beethoven, Beethoven movies? Was that before this? Uh, this was before this. So Beethoven yeah. 2, I think maybe it was shot after Clifford, but Clifford was one of the last theatrical films that he made. I oh think that was God. mostly on his own accord. Like, he just didn't want to act anymore. Yeah. Like, it's not like he was yeah. trying to get jobs and he couldn't get them, but... He uh, who's hired. not going to hire Charles Grodin? He's amazing. Speaking of it, dogs. There's going to be 12 of those Beethoven movies. Remember the dog in this movie? Yes. It disappears after that opening scene. I, I just realized that. I know. I just realized that. Yeah. Hey, we'll, yeah. we'll get to uh, it. That's a cinema sin right there. Ding! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, it was shelved, not because the movie was bad, but because Orion Pictures, yeah. that it was made under, folded, and several movies that were made during this time uh, had... Yeah, such made. great movies as RoboCop 3. Okay. <laughs> and... uh, there's a couple others. Of yeah, oh, no, the studio it. thought this movie was bad because the wraparound thing was shot many years later before it was released. Yeah, so yeah. when they were going to re-release it, I guess like when a studio goes bankrupt, it's like somebody's got to buy. I think buy someone the has company. to buy the uh, the movies. Like yeah, that. so all the yeah. movies, uh, the rights are kind of like in limbo, so they couldn't release it until 1984. Yeah, Clifford had been released in 1991 when the iron was hot. Maybe we'd be talking about it as a modern day classic. <laughs> well, is there much difference between 91 and 94 in the no. comedy scene? No, no, it's not just, at all. You know, no. Well, we wouldn't have the opening, uh, we wouldn't have the bookends, the opening and closing scenes which, of this movie. I liked the bookends. Which, which uh, take place. Martin Short in old age makeup, doing wait, shtick. He, he looks like John Carpenter's character in Body Bag. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. He looks so. Old. They didn't get the best makeup. He looks like a rotting corpse, but for whatever, whatever reason, well, somebody somebody tweeted about it. They had a screenshot of Martin Short present day. They're like, here's what Martin Short looks like at 66. He hears him playing 66 in Clifford. <laughs> and he looks and he, younger? He looks like a rotting corpse in Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's... A, I, I think He was, looks exactly the same. Like, yeah, but, like, they made him look like he was, like, 90. But yeah. his, if, if you... The, the character would have only been, like... 70 or something, something like that. Something like that. Like that. Uh, yeah. It opens in 2050. Yeah. Uh, he's like a priest at a, a, I don't know, like a, a boarding boys, school for, for boys. Boys school. The school for wayward boys. And then uh, one of the kids is trying to escape. It's Fred Savage. Ben Savage. Fred Savage's wiener brother. The kid from Boy Meets World. <laughs> People I did not know, know what this. that is. Okay, I, I, I'm, I was an avid Boy Meets World watcher. I've heard of it. Yeah, me too. I've never seen an episode. It it's was on not Disney, on any of the on, channels that it's I on watched. On Disney Plus, we're not watching it. I watched a little bit of it, like the day I got Disney Plus, because I was like, oh my god, they have it. Did you watch the <laughs> reboot that came out as well? There was a reboot. Oh yeah, I think it's Girl Meets uh, World, and it's about their daughter, mm. and they're in it. The two main characters oh, from the my original show. and Topanga come back. I mean, I, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna watch it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, like the wraparound sequences were filmed to kind of give a context, and I, I assume... guess to explain that it's a flashback or to kind of give reason but why I Martin think Short... a big problem with that is that it feels there's like 15 minutes missing from the movie. It does and that was yeah. uh the wraparound is kind of shot to to make up for that or kind of explain mm-hmm. things like yeah, you know if they just end with like long. a yeah 
But uh, I was laughing so hard. This one scene where Martin Short catches the kid trying to escape and he's just like, I guess the kid is like throwing stuff out of his window off screen. <laughs> Martin Short is just continually getting pummeled by yeah. like a knapsack and like a bag. And then the kid himself like flies onto him. Oh, it was fuck, a I was funny slapstick so scene. But yeah, so he says like, he tells him the story. He's like, yeah, he's like when he, I was a kid, and I think that that was maybe like a test audience. Like, why is Martin Short like? A child. Is he a like? Child. People probably don't understood, <laughs> could, didn't understand if he even was a child. Yeah, imagine starting this movie. So you can kind of imagine it as like a fantasy sort of. You know, he's looking he's at the, at the past. You know, in his present day form. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, but, but he doesn't look like a desiccated corpse. Oh, in the flashback. that would be so funny if he was. <laughs> no, and I mean they didn't even go like overboard with the makeup on Clifford young Clifford he's they didn't li- need he's to literally just Martin Short he looks like a child he kind of has a little boy haircut but yeah um yeah he looks like a child. and we were we were laughing well in some shots like you know when they show him uh the first time we see him is on an airplane and he's sitting between his two parents one of them is Richard Kind you can tell that okay they've removed the cushion from the seat so he's a bit lower but all the all the behind you know wide shots of him next to Charles Grodin and other people it's not a child double. It's actually Martin Short. No, I like, think it's a child double. I don't think so. I'm a truther on this. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the scene where he goes into the airplane cockpit, that's the one where he's on his knees. He is, He's yeah. clearly on his knees. <laughs> yeah, he's dwarfing it. <laughs> and, yes. and it was, it's just hilarious to me. And, uh, you know, he kind of does like a little boy voice. He kind of talks like this. Oh, hello, hello. He's like very precocious and very polite. And he wears suits and ties, which are also adorable. Yeah, he's dressed like Angus Young from ACDC for most of the movie. <laughs> Man, there are eight dwarf movies. Jesus Christ. Is that what you're looking up? <laughs> yes. You got to focus, man. We're talking about Dwarf Clifford. on golf. Dwarf go- golf Bible. Dwarf goes auto racing. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Dwarf God. in it. <laughs> all released theatrically, right? They're probably all on YouTube, I bet. <laughs> oh, they're guaranteed on YouTube. Yeah. You know, all those, that great Tim Conway comedy. Yeah. That's like, uh, you know, when I remember seeing ads for that, like, Dorf? Endless, endlessly. <laughs> They're like, Dorf, Dorf, Dorf. It's like, who's Dorf? You know, with the blue screen, like, you know, send your $10 money order, check a money order to whatever in <laughs> Buffalo, New York. Oh, man, Eddie Deason is in the, in the show or the movies. Ah, the hits keep coming. Ugh, well, I, we got to review Dorf in a future podcast. I do wonder, like, how they came up with the idea for Clifford. Like, it, it obviously is. Well, they like, were doing a parody of The Bad Seed. The uh, classic Hollywood oh. film about a bad child. Really? And I think that maybe like uh, Martin Shore was like, wouldn't it be funny if I played the bad seed? Yeah. And that's per- <laughs> basically yeah, it. But that being said, it. this movie would be terrible if Clifford was played by a child. Yeah. If I, I was trying to imagine that. Like a Macaulay uh, It would maybe be a problem child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we've seen that in movies and it, it sucks and it would be too cutesy. This has this like, darker edge Mm -hmm. and it kind of comes in where clifford is attracted to charles groden's girlfriend mary steen virgin um but so he's kind of like flirting with her but not like an adult would like he's also not like grabbing her and touching her kissing her he's Mm -hmm. just like he's in love with her he He, he is giving her the creeper stare creeper stare yes Mm -hmm. but my point is he's not like going over the edge to where it's no 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 he's still behaving like a child like as far as uh using his age to their advantage there's only like one scene uh, where Charles Gordon walks in on him and he's sitting on the bed drinking a big a big gulp mm-hmm. and he's watching like naked women. It's like uh, African tribal oh, yeah. women dancing. There's like boobs. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... I'm a, like, okay, that would be creepy if it was a kid. Yeah, that would be probably... A yeah, back then, you know, uh, if it's not white, it's no problem, right? <laughs> that was probably like, well, it's educational. We could show Yeah, this education. All those National Geographics that, you know, old <laughs> Colin had stashed under his bed. <laughs> hey, who didn't? No, I'm just <laughs> Dude, that in the Sears catalogs. Yeah. So uh, Clifford's on this plane and he wants to go to Dinosaur Land in L.A. instead of I think they're headed to Hawaii. They are. Yeah, I think it's for the dad's yeah, uh, work World. or something like that. Yeah, Dinosaur World. It's kind of like Wally World in vacation. Mm hmm. And so uh, Clifford makes the plane basically crash. Yeah, he gets a tour of the cockpit and then they don't show what happens, but it's implied that he pushes a button and the plane is, is I got to say, nice model work on the plane. Yeah, mm. there's models in this movie. Yeah, I, I quite like that. And so the plane crashes and his parents hate him so much that they're like, we're going to 
give them to, I guess, uh, Richard Kind's brother that he says that he doesn't even talk to anymore. Yeah, Charles Grodin. But I, I love that the the mom is clearly just drunk all the time on the plane. She's like passed out drunk with like a scotch and soda. That's what they have to do just to, to deal, deal with, with Clifford. Clifford. Um, and what is wrong with Clifford? Well, he's very hyperactive. Um, you know, he uh, he's a in, monster. He he's a sociopath. Yeah, he's, he's a horrifying monster. Um, I like though. He's like, how can we not go to Dinosaur World? And it's my birthday. And Richard Kind's like, your birthday was six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's obsessed with Dinosaur World. Um, but we get a little preamble, right, with Charles Grodin and Mary Steenburgen to set up uh, why he ends up staying there which is that charles grodin wants mary steenburgen what's her name she has some 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 fancy name in this it's oh, like mary remember. elizabeth or something that's not it we no. never call uh <laughs> characters by their character name we always yeah. call them by their actor's name well, anyway she wants to move in with him but she he he buys this like total bachelor pad and she's like I want a family. Like, what the hell is this? He, he didn't even talk to her about, like, the place that they were going to buy and yeah. live in together. <laughs> Come on, Charles Grodin. Yeah, he buys this, like, amazing house on a cliff. And she's like, "What are the, where are the kids going to play? Are we going to tell them to go outside and play on the cliff? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I swear I love kids. And she doesn't believe him. And he's yeah. like, I have a uh, nephew. I think Clifford is his name. And just so happens to call him. Mm-hmm. And then so so he, he's like, yeah. great. He sees this as, like, an opportunity to get, in, uh, get into her good books. And, like, see, kids love me. I get along great with kids a horrible idea though if you're if you're going into marriage and you you haven't sorted this out especially the fact that he has a big presentation that he has to give in two days <laughs> yeah that's a, it's, it's a classic right i was kind of wondering like it, it's sort of implied when they go later on to her parents uh anniversary it's implied that charles Gordon has never met them before I, <laughs> that is sure. insane I, yeah which is it, I, like, he's got to yeah. be, like, 48 or something in this movie. Well, maybe they just started dating. I guess. But he's acting like a like a teenager around the dad, like, oh, oh, yeah, I love your daughter, sir. You've done a great job Charles bringing her up. Charles Grodin is ageless. <laughs> Much like yeah, he was only 22 when he made this movie. <laughs> he's been, he was the true Clifford. <laughs> he's, he's the original curmudgeon. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, as far as, like, the humor goes in this movie, uh, we've been watching a lot of, like, uh, uh, comedies from the, like, late 80s and 90s just over the past, like, few months. Um, and this is... In this hellscape we call yeah. 2020, 2021. <laughs> sure, I just want to laugh. It's been the only thing that's been keeping me going sometimes. Uh, and I, what I love about this movie is just it is of that tone, mm-hmm. of that older comedy that just doesn't exist anymore. And mm-hmm. you can't... It, yeah. It's very White people too. only, no minorities. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Well, um, a lot of, I find a lot of modern comedies, they always have to do that third act kind of veer into drama territory. And they yeah. get very maudlin and sentimental. Uh, the characters really have to like earn something and you know have yeah. an arc and that sort of thing. Uh, and it always is such a bring down for me, and I, I can't stand it. Yeah, this is one of those you, movies where it just like if you think of a movie like Role Models, mm-hmm. did you ever see that? That's another movie about like older men connecting with the young kids, and mm-hmm. that totally does it in the, in the third act. I, I can't stand that, and, and I that's feel, a David Wayne movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, you didn't get movies like that in the in the nineties. No, instead you get an yeah, insane no feelings, you, just laugh. You get an exactly. insane Pee Wee's Big Adventure style um, third act in which it goes completely. Off the rails. Uh, wow. What are you talking about? Planes, trains, and automobiles? <laughs> There's some maudlinness at the end of that. Just a little bit. That you know. goes off the rails, too. Just a little, just a little, <laughs> you know, five minute thing at the end, and that's great. But, you know. Well, yeah. this doesn't do it at all. That, that movie earned it, I think. And well, this doesn't do it at all. It kind of does in the wraparound, but. Sure. That was added later. And again, that's like 30 seconds. And it's not even, it's really just Clifford decides not to be a jerk anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to convince this kid, you know, you don't, here's what happens when you're an asshole. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Um, Those are studio mandated wraparounds, definitely, of like, I'm you sure. need to see Clifford learned a lesson yeah. and that he's good now and that he's not still a sociopathic monster. I wonder if they had an ending like the original um, Bad Seed where the kid gets <laughs> hit by lightning. Oh really? Yeah, that's how it ends. It's I was not gonna, a comedy, is it? I, I can I can just picture no, like the Charles, bad seat is very serious. I can just picture like Charles Grodin, you know, trying to decide whether to save him at Dinosaur World when the, the ride falls and apart. Just letting, and him just letting him go and he just falls into the abyss or into the dinosaur's mouth. Oh, what if the third act like Charles Grodin was haunted by the ghost of Clifford? <laughs> what, from the future? 
No. Oh, you mean after he, he dies? He Dinosaur World. The wraparound doesn't exist in this version. <laughs> no, it would be... Maybe that's the setup, and then for the rest of the movie, he's haunted by Clifford <laughs> and tortured by him, by a ghost Clifford that he can't kill. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Just like Ghost Clifford. That's the sequel. That's what we're setting up <laughs> ghost for. Ghost Clifford. Um, so right I, from the get-go, Charles Grodin's trying to be nice. Clifford's being a little jerk. He steals a bunch of stuff at the airport, including a dog. A dog and a, a surfboard. Yeah, it's it's like he you just see them steals a bunch of stuff. You see them driving back from the airport, and there's like a dog licking Charles Gordon's face, and it's like the whole back is filled with junk. And he's like, "Oh, you know, my dad doesn't like. Uh, he's afraid of thieves, so he makes me take everything every time I go on vacation." And yeah, then this dog just disappears. We never see this dog again. I thought it was yeah, it be. Marmaduke's right out of that movie, <laughs> jumping through a fence. It kind of looks like Marmaduke. It's that. It's a Great Dane, I think. Yeah. Is it? Uh, wait, it's not uh, a- Marmaduke, the comic that keeps on giving. <laughs> never have, have I ne- not laughed looking at that big dog. <laughs> it's never gonna end. It's probably still going. Has there? Uh, speaking of Clifford, they're making a, a giant red dog movie. I think they're oh, always they? making giant red dog movies. So. For the red dog, yeah. yeah. Uh, I never had any uh, no. nostalgia or affinity for that giant red dog, no. which seems very destructive. I, uh, I read the books, a little, you know, kids' story Did books. he fight other dogs and or giant cats? I don't think there were any other giant animals in Clifford. They should do like a crossover of like Garfield and Clifford and... and uh, I think you're missing the Keith best Keith? animal Heathcliff, Heathcliff, the Kmart Garfield. <laughs> but you're right, Colin. I saw a thing for a new like CGI Clifford of coming out that looks. Uh, I hope they're going to make it more like grim and gritty, the way that the Clifford author wanted Clifford to be portrayed. Director Zack Snyder brings you a his vision of destruction of Clifford. Clifford's like we live in a society. <laughs> Isn't that right, Batman? <laughs> Heathcliff. <laughs> <laughs> who in this version is also giant. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna... Oh, that reminds me. We should do that Scooby-Doo movie that came out. That's the expanded Hanna-Barbera universe. What? Which one? There's a lot of Scooby-Doo Scoob! Scoob! Exclamation Scoob. point. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> well, coming soon to a Patreon near you. Not Back to the movie. I'm going to say my favorite thing about this movie. Now, I liked it like a lot of things. So I'm going to take the musical score. Um, because this is, again, one of these older movies where the score is like telling a story mm-hmm. a lot. There are scenes Wait, with Wait, don't no you mean score. the score is like... Exactly. And there are scenes with with no no score that are silent that mm-hmm. are hilarious and played for comedy. But most of it, it's like it's like that or it's like ramping up the drama to an insane degree. Mm-hmm. And the person who did this was uh, Richard Gibbs, who I know because he worked on the first season of The Simpsons, which uh, he... Oh, he, he was one of the guys that they kicked to the curb Yeah, so when, he uh, worked on the first season before they got uh, Alf Clausen in there, mm-hmm. who completely changed the show and mm-hmm. made it 10 million times better. So it's kind of interesting how you see this and you kind of think, cartoon you know because it does have that it, it's a very like uh every kind of move and every scene is like guided by this very very present <laughs> music but it's it's of the time so mm-hmm. i mean i i enjoyed it <laughs> it, it helped do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what i was missing was like that maudlin like robin williams dramedy weepy piano music that played in every 90s movie oh, yeah and i didn't it didn't get that far i don't think maybe in some no. of the scenes with Mary Steenburgen. No. <laughs> well anyway, at at one point we uh, we're introduced to Dabney Coleman. Is yeah, because boss? uh a conflict happens where uh, Charles Grodin, he has to change his whole presentation and he only has two days left. Well, he's an, but he promised Clifford that he'd take him to Dinosaur World. Yeah, so he's an architect and it's sort of established that I guess he works for Dabney Coleman's architect firm or something like that. Mm-hmm. But he's got this huge <gasps> model of LA and he's designing like the, subway. the subway. An above ground I hope subway. nothing will happen to it. Oh no, not a subway, a monorail, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, think so, something yeah, like something that. like that. And I hope it's not going to explode or anything like that. <laughs> with a floppy disk somehow. Yeah. So, uh, so him and Ma- Mary Steenburgen, does she work for Dabney Coleman as well? Yes. We don't know how. Because okay. I thought she was yes. a teacher. Well, Oh, wait, she is a teacher. So yeah, why does she go my, to like a different... Yeah, my thought was that she's teaching the daycare in their office building. Oh, um, that sounds about which right. Which is a thing that big office buildings have for... <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. um, 
Although, did they have them in the eighties? I didn't. I don't know. Because I think uh, some of the big, bigger offices. Like the did. idea that they thing. did is because more women were working and mm-hmm. they needed mm-hmm. daycare. And if you, it's all part, it's in the same building. Like, um, uh, it's much more convenient. Hey, Dabney Coleman, he's learned something from you know nine from to nine five. To five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he learn something from Cloak and Dagger, where he died at the end to protect his son? Jack Flack. I liked that movie as a kid. Oh, the Cloak and Dagger is great. Uh, Love it. So yeah, Dabney Coleman and Mary Steenburgen and Charles Grodin are talking about his wig, you know, and and Clifford. Why over... did they just call it a toupee? I don't. <laughs> uh, they just say it's a wig. Well, anyway, they're like, don't mention it to him. And Clifford overhears this, and then he says, "Oh, you know, nice to meet you. You have the bestest looking wig I've ever seen." So he, so he you know, embarrasses him. He kind of embarrasses Charles Grodin, and then Dabney Coleman decides that Charles Grodin, you've got to redesign this entire subway system, but you've only got two days before the big presentation. So he can't take Clifford to Dinosaur World, wah, wah. Um, which he doesn't know like what happens when you cross Clifford. Yet. <laughs> but he's about to find out. Yeah, it's like Clifford. Uh, is... Well, when he tells Clifford in the car, Clifford like grabs the wheel <laughs> and then starts screaming, <laughs> "I need chocolate!" Oh yeah, he uh, he eats a lot of sugar. That's his thing. I want to say that just before they leave Dabney Coleman's office building, Clifford is like seen hacking. I guess when you come into the office, there's like a monitor greeting you. And it's <laughs> yeah, he's like hacking the system for some reason. Yeah, it's Dabney Coleman's face that's talking to you like, welcome to so-and-so. Yeah, and did Cl- that come to anything? Clifford is hacking it and removes his hair somehow from the image. Oh, I guess it was just <laughs> so a he's bald. funny little thing. <laughs> and they never mention it or address it. He's just being pulled away by Charles Grodin and you yeah. kind of see it in the background. It's really every funny. child in the 90s was a hacker well, they, just... they were yeah because yeah, they had all seen hackers the classic film that taught you to hack like, or jurassic park. jurassic park yeah oh that's right uh, uh, uh. <laughs> if you get your hands on wait are you system. trying to say that wayne knight is some kind of child <laughs> no the little girl is a hacker in that yeah oh is she yeah she's hacking the unit i know this oh it's a Unix that's system. right i'm not a nerd i was gonna I'm say that w- that newman is the key to everything <laughs> it's funny i started uh my first job i started working on Unix. Unix computers. So, you know, when I, it was like 94 <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I know you minute. said Unix, yeah, but it sounded like, uh, the other word for a genital, a yes, a like genitalia a list man. No, it's, uh, U-N-I-X. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm like, hey, this isn't like the Unix systems in Jurassic Park. <laughs> and they're like flying around in 3D <laughs> yeah, and all this sort of, of stuff. Yeah, of course not. Because that was fake for the movies. Ah, so disappointed. That's why I got into VFX in the first place. I'm like, I get to use Unix systems. You're like, I need to make a thing that goes, ah, 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 <laughs> when the password is wrong. You're going to say the magic now word. Now we finally can. Um, so, <laughs> Wait, it, yeah. does anybody do that? Can, can I get an app for that? <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm sure. Yeah. I bet there was screensavers oh, back in the day. I guarantee you. You can some pay Wayne thing. Knight a hundred dollars to do it for you on Cameo. I'm sure you can. And he just sounds like really like worn down. I bet you he's more than a hundred dollars <laughs> on Cameo. God, I hope so. Do you think he is on Cameo? I bet you he is. Yeah. Oh yeah, he definitely is. Um, I'm not gonna check. Sweet cash on the side. So, you know, yeah, he has to he has to tell Clifford that he can't take him to Dinosaur World, and so now Clifford is gonna just torture He's Charles Grodin. try and ruin his life. Ruin his life for the rest of the movie. And uh, I guess the first big scene is the anniversary party. So it's Mary Steenburgen's parents' 35th anniversary or something like that. Wait, is she 35? She can't be 35. What, in the movie? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know. She looks... They both maybe. Look, they both look older. Well, who's to say? I know. Who knows? You know, people... Yeah, through our wizened eyes, the 30-year-olds, <laughs> we're like, oh, who is, who is, it's how true. old are they? Do I look the same age as Murray Stream Virgin in that movie? <laughs> Murray Stream um, Virgin? I think I look a little younger, but who knows? You who know? knows? It was the perm, I think, that was making her look older. Yeah. <laughs> no, she just has a mature look. So does Charles Grodin. I mean, come on. Yeah. He's, he's got a, He's like pushing 50 in this thing. Uh, and uh oh, is it a good idea for Charles Grodin to bring Clifford to the <laughs> um, rich dinner party? He's such a delightful child. I don't understand. Yeah, I All the old people love him. I think the girlfriend insisted that she bring him. Yeah, because see, Clifford's like being a real sweet talker and like, oh, hello. And I, I love she how he loves you, him. I love how he always refers to uh, Charles Grodin as my uncle. Oh, my uncle! You are yeah. the best uncle. He has. He's like uncle. Yeah, we Steve actually haven't done the Clifford voice on this podcast yet. <laughs> But how would you describe it? Give us an example, Colin. You're a master of uh, master. voices and accents. Oh, hold on a second here. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's that guy's name from the Police Academy movies? 
who does all the oh, sound effects. Uh, Michael Winslow. Michael Winslow. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that made me laugh, but whatever. Because yeah. you're like, Michael Winslow is the name of... What would he do? The character in Family Matters <laughs> and Die Hard. I'm sure he would always do that. It's like, do a refrigerator breaking down. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So no Clifford voice like, hey, it's me, Clifford. He doesn't talk like that. It's he just, more talks, like, he just talks like regular hi, Martin it's, Short. It's me, Clifford. It's a yeah, it like is. It's me, it is ever Clifford. so nice to meet you. My, yeah. Uh, my yeah, uncle. there you go. See, I was just tricking you into doing the voice by doing it wrong. Take me to Forming take me monkey. The dinosaur world. Dinosaur world. He's do a little, little like a Woody Allen kind of a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a list. Yeah. Yeah. That's just him, though. Um, that's Martin Short. So, yeah, Charles Grodin shows up at this party, and right away, the uh, parents, Mary Steenburgen's parents, hate him. The dad especially hates him. He's, he hates oh, his oh, oh, yeah, his monocle falls out while he's talking to Charles Jeez Grodin. Louise. I've seen this guy before. I think he's in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. Could be. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I, I recognize him, too. I, he's just one of those actors, sorry. I think. We dead-ended Colin. <laughs> but, yeah, he's up to antics in this uh, scene, like making his uh, Caesar all Tabasco. Well, that okay, so this is my favorite uh, part of the movie, is that, um, you know, classic problem child style, he uh, makes Charles Grodin drink a whole thing of Tabasco sauce mm-hmm. instead of Caesar, and wouldn't you have it? Charles Grodin is in the middle of the speech. Yeah, it's like a um, toast to the parents. When he drinks yeah, it, that was funny. and Charles Grodin's face. <laughs> he, he's like, he is actually like, mm-hmm tearing up <laughs> and he like he like points and he gives a thumbs up <laughs> to, the, to the mom he's so like i'm funny. taking sick because he said something he did a toast to the, the father and he needed to toast the mom but he didn't get that far well, so he say just something. gives her a thumbs yeah. up say something about the mom and oh. he's he's like going red and his eyes are watering it's so good i wonder if he actually like and like he breaks down and he goes to drink some juice <laughs> and people react like he murdered someone he's like he's an animal the reactions are insane yeah he goes to the punch bowl and is like drinking it out of the ladle <laughs> But then something funny happens after this, which is uh, he brings um, Martin Shore Clifford into the back room and he's like roughing up and he's like, how could you do this? And then Clifford like reenacts the scene we just watched, which is it's funny to me when movies do that, because it's like it's so funny. We're just going to we're just going to tell you what you just watched. Yeah, just Remember way, when this happened? It's just the way Martin Short is doing it. It's so funny. And then Martin Short, uh, not Martin Short, uh, Charles Grodin beats Clifford with the most comedic thing that he can grab. <laughs> A baguette. Yeah, he's in the kitchen. He drags this child in, and then he tells all the chefs to to get out of here. They need some private time. And he's, this is another thing I don't think would have worked if uh, if it was actually a child it's instead a of Martin time Short. With my nephew. With my nephew, and then was going to beat <laughs> well, him with a baguette. We skipped over the scene where he's like, "Oh, Clifford switched uh, costumes with your son," and and then the mom is like, "Where's my son? Oh, he's in the bathroom. I paid him money." <laughs> yeah, where? Yeah, that's a there's an earlier gas station scene we kind of skipped, but yeah, so he yeah. just gave like. Like hundreds of dollars to some random kid. Why did he have that money? Maybe he stole it from Charles Grodin. Who knows? No, he's in the bathroom counting his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the 90s were all about like pedophile jokes. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of them in the early 90s. This was before the time when the late 90s, early 2000s was gay panic city. Well, what was mm-hmm. that uh, Gerard Depardieu movie where... Uh, was it like My Father Catherine, the Hero? Catherine Heigl. Yeah, that whole movie. Oh, you're thinking movie. of My Father the Hero? Yeah, that yeah. whole movie is based on like him being a pedophile, pretty much. Oh my God, really? I've yeah. never seen that. He takes his daughter to some like a resort, and yeah, then I don't. She know convinces I... everyone in the resort that they're uh, resort that they're lovers. So everyone, Ugh. he doesn't know this. So everyone in the resort thinks that he's a disgusting like yeah. child molester. Gerard Depardieu didn't know it was a movie either. He thought he was just <laughs> shooting some documentary or something. I read the script. Oh, a child molester. But like in it, that's hilarious in France. Uh, in Clifford, we're coming up to a big like gay panic scene with the. I mentioned it before. Um, Charles Grodin has a thing where he's always putting on chapstick, which I think is supposed to be weird and funny. But like we we wear chapstick all the time, right, I guys? It, I use it all the time. <laughs> I'm an anti chapstick person, really, uh, really? for myself, because I know that once I start, I won't be able to stop. It's true. I have heard that if you overuse it, your lips will just keep being um, chapped. But mm-hmm. especially yeah. in the winter, like I I need to use it. I don't use it like all the time. I use it but constantly, several times a day for sure. For <laughs> I, st- I started when I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and now i Down need the mental tubes, chapstick put them week. to my lips <laughs> yeah so i guess like clifford swaps out the chapstick for lipstick at one yeah. point so he starts putting on this lipstick 
And the reaction... You would think that this is the most hilarious joke. Everyone is laughing at the table. They have never seen like anything funnier. A man wearing lipstick. Cackling. Like, they've never seen something, like, so outrageous before. But what is funny about that scene is he doesn't know why they're laughing. And right. he's trying to just, like, roll with it in just that perfect, like, Charles Grodin awkward way. Mm. And then he takes a sip of his drink and he sees the lipstick. The lipstick, which is a great uh, reaction, by the way. <laughs> like, just, looking at the lipstick. It's just the... a well-thought, it's a well-executed gag but yeah, why are they reacting like that they should i don't shouldn't they be like oh, i i don't know mary steve who would care like you know what i mean nowadays it's just like oh Some, you got a little something on your lip there yeah <laughs> somebody would do that like mary steen version looks at him like kind like, of horrified you're insane oh my god yeah. you're wearing lipstick oh my god and especially the dad her dad is is just like disgusted it's like oh god didn't doesn't clifford say that like oh her dad said that he wanted to like murder you or something like that yeah. later yeah um, which you probably oh didn't yeah, because I forgot that what happened at the end of the scene is that uh, Charles Grodin gets arrested. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the 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 topper to this very funny scene. Um, previously seen, Martin Short uh, uh, set up the answering machine to secretly tape Charles Grodin while he was yelling at him. Yeah, um, and then he kind of yeah, and then he edits together. the dialogue into be like, "I have set up a bomb." Yeah, he phones in a bomb threat, and then the police come and arrest him in front of everybody. They're like, oh, your husband called it a bomb threat. Yeah, and then we get a kind of a funny scene of them interrogating him. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's a really funny joke where he's like, oh, it's too bright. Turn the light down. He's like, oh, no, yeah. that's too down. No, I'm just in darkness. Yeah, like, you're just trying well, how to about grill this? me because I'm doing these lights. And he's like, okay, how about like this? Like, well, now it's just too dark. And it's it's yeah. a very funny, Charles awkward Grodin. humor. Yeah, he's my favorite thing about the movie. I mean, uh, Martin Short is great too but charles groden i don't know I, i've just got a soft he's spot just some. Your favorite he's thing. so good at just playing this type of character that is, I know. is so put upon and is you know ready to snap and no one ever talks about it but i loved the beethoven movies as a kid both <laughs> both of them i think that they went on and had like a bajillion oh, sequels yeah. but i know that he was in one and two i don't know if he was in anything at the that. least yeah it feels so. like they did like a dozen of those yeah movies. but like yeah those dumb movies for kids but he's he's great in he's it he's a master you know? uh, at like just physical kind of gags and just like his face and reaction and, and just and his personality being exasperated at yeah, things <laughs> just constantly oh he's so good like has he ever been in a movie where he plays like the goofy character yeah. well not goofy but in midnight run that was when i was telling you about oh, with robert de niro maybe i should check that uh out. he he also starred in elaine may's the heartbreak kid oh, i haven't seen uh, him. and he's very funny in that as well but isn't the heartbreak kid like um the straight man and like uh he marries a woman that's crazy isn't that the uh kind of he's not really the straight man though he's still a bit of a goofy Oh, that was uh, remade yeah. by the Ferrelli brothers. I only saw the remake, and I didn't even see all of it. <laughs> by the Ferrellis. The Ferrelli brothers. <laughs> so is it after this dinner, when Charles Grodin gets back home, that we get the um, amazing scene where he's like, act like a human boy, or like, look like <laughs> yeah. a human Something boy? Something we forgot to mention so far is Martin Short's face. He does yeah. a face in yeah. this movie that's so funny, it's, and he does it throughout the entire movie. It's like he's trying to do this little innocent boy. Yeah, smile but like one face. eye goes goes dead. It's yeah. kind of like a Peter Falk impression. Yeah, he's it's really really funny. <laughs> it's so hilarious. I can't even like you got to see and it. And Charles Grodin's like, just look like a normal human boy, <laughs> and like Martin Short, it looks like he's having like a seizure. Yeah. He just keeps making faces. <laughs> he just so. pulls this face, and like honestly, you can't even words it's do so not funny. do it justice oh, he's, so he's good like you're oh. doing it stop doing it just be normal and he's just, like <laughs> shaking him and he's just like, making this funny face and when charles groden comes back from uh, the jail he like smashes t- <laughs> uh martin short's face into like a cereal bowl. Oh, yeah. he's like eat up <laughs> which is like a comically large bowl of cereal i don't know yeah. if they were it's making it large to make to... him look smaller you don't need to make oversized props to make martin short look small though oh speaking mm-hmm. of which we looked up martin short's height on google Five seven. That that's, can't yes, be. That's a lie. Can't be that's right. Right. He's got to be shorter than that because that's not short. That's there, my height. There people. are wide shots of him, unless Charles Grodin is like six foot five. Well, they could have like given that. him lifts. Eh. I mean, that's what you do in a movie like this. But listen, everybody. 
<laughs> I'm five seven, and Colin is well, even shorter than me by a little bit. So, so are you saying Colin's four seven? Colin oh, is 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 uh, tall. Is, is shorter than Clifford. That can't be. That can't be so. <laughs> That's what we're gonna put on Colin's gravestone. Shorter than Clifford. No, he's such a good. See, Martin Short is five foot seven. Clifford is. Like, but he's such a good actor that Clifford, through just the way he moves Clifford his is body, five foot three. you think he's small. Well, like there's not a lot of info out there maybe if there is a blu-ray someday about like okay so we put everyone in lifts uh, in the scene or we put him unfortunately in, like, a blu-ray came out like three months ago no special features oh, oh man um but like you know okay he was on his knees in this scene or we used a double in it's this clear, scene like i want to know it's clear when people around him like there's a scene later so basically uh, uh clifford escalates things for some reason dabney coleman is going on a trip with Mary Steenburgen. It's a secret sex trip. Yeah, he just under the guise of work, and Charles Grodin is okay with this. And then uh, Clifford tricks Charles Grodin into going to San Francisco. He makes it look like he's running away, and he gets on a train. Charles yeah. Grodin gets on, and then the train starts to move, and he sees Clifford like on the platform, like waving. Uh, in in this wide shot, you can see that Martin Short is is just a short guy. Like there's there's no trickery going on here. <laughs> it's all forced perspective, like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but he can't be five seven. They built five, a five, giant <laughs> um, train station a giant, around. A it's actually train. just giant well, puppets. Well, of you were saying like around. the the next scene where he he has a house party. He has a house party at Charles Grodin's house. Well, there's a scene where he's dancing. Yeah. And I'm like, is there like a CG effect going on here? Or? Colin he, said he was in a hole. Yeah, he looks like he's composited in the wide shot, but he's not. Like he couldn't have been because you know, it, doesn't was, look composite. it was 1990. So he's not that much shorter than the people around him. But then they do a kind of medium shot and he's clearly he's like waist up. Yeah, or he is like, you know, a foot and a half shorter than everybody. So everyone is standing on uh, like apple boxes around him as he kind of dances yeah, in the middle. Yeah, they probably put, it, pro- rather than dig a hole in the floor, they probably <laughs> put everyone else on risers. Yeah, it was like Citizen Kane. They're like, we need to make a hole in the set. Well, it's somebody's house, sir. It's not a set. Do it. it. No, it's not someone's house. It's art. <laughs> Get it done. So then Charles Grodin goes all the way to San Francisco. He kind of catches Mary Steenburgen uh, at dinner with Dabney Coleman. Yeah, who's it's being all a real big s- misunderstanding. Yeah, or Dan is Coleman. Yeah, but but Charles Grodin is like looking through the window and it's like raining outside. <laughs> that would, and he's yeah. like, oh, it's like, it's like that scene in Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd <laughs> yeah, in Santa Sue. It, it, it's it very is. similar. Yeah, um, <laughs> and she's just that like, scene in Trading Places is so funny. Yeah. Oh man! Oh man! So yeah, and then he and uh, anyway they they talk. It's like a big misunderstanding, but then he goes back to back home. Clifford, I think he calls the house, and some kid answers. He's yeah, like, he's like, "We're having a party at Clifford's house." <laughs> some kid said, uh, "We could come over if we take him to Dinosaur World." How did he get all these like young teenagers <laughs> to come to this? house who knows that's like i was telling april you put up posters so you did things back in the day you probably did but like if you were a you know a 20 year old and it's like oh hey a, a house party hosted by a 10 year old like would you show up you don't say it's hosted by a 10 year old they just did well obviously yeah. they had to you show see up Clifford and you're like that's clearly a 40 year old man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's yeah. this weirdo in the uh, exactly. angus young outfit um, but yeah, he shows up and then um, he bore he like boards Clifford. No, Dabney <laughs> Coleman gets back and Clifford is like tied up and he's like, "Oh, there were some bikers that arrived and they tied me oh, up." Yeah. Um, what was up with that? He was like hogtied because at first I thought that Clifford did that to himself. He did. He did do it, it to himself he, because he gets out of it right after. I, okay, my question is, how do you hogtie yourself? He could get in and out. I don't know. <laughs> he, he's an escape artist, this guy. But then Charles Grodin, uh, that's not enough. So he he gets out all these. <laughs> planks of wood it's like in a cartoon and boards up his window he's like nailing in the and middle this of the is night when the music... and then he's just like working on his plan just sweating <laughs> the music is like <laughs> looking crazy and he's like um calling him like the exorcist and, and saying your head's gonna be spinning around and you're vomiting uh, uh he's yeah he's really laying it on uh, heavy and then mary comes uh to their house and she's like what is going on <laughs> yeah and clifford is tied up it's like oh charles groden's you know he's always trying to make him look bad he's like he tied me up and left me here and then uh it's implying that he has like rage issues and stuff like that so charles groden has probably only worked on this new plan for like all of 10 minutes and all the stuff that's been happening somehow pulls it off the the new monorail plan he pulls it off and it's established earlier on in the movie that they have this gigantic like scale model of of la uh Mm -hmm. it's so big so charles groden gets this disc 
uh, which I guess downloads the plans. No, I've never well, seen. Is a it disc the like assumption this. that like so Clifford hacked either the disc I, or the mainframe? I'm not because Charles Grown the disc is hidden by Clifford and he has to go find yeah, it. Yeah, but I don't know how this disc is supposed to control this scale model of L.A. It's so weird and, and like shift it around and or something also, like that, or <laughs> do what it actually does when he plugs it in, which is explode. explode. So, yeah. Where did those explosives come Who from? Knows? It's, it's what you could do back in the day. People didn't understand computers. So you, you could just hack a code and explosions just generate out of thin air yeah man um i'll buy it it's if a movie you're, where martin short plays a 10 year old i'll buy anything. a 10 year old hacker that can make things explode with like a floppy disk or something the like thing that. is the character's not like nerdy enough to no. be a, he's a little pansy boy yeah he loves dinosaurs he loves dinosaurs and computers yeah what yeah but he also has like machiavellian plans that he's constantly <laughs> yeah. at one point he goes oh sometimes i scare myself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got some mental issues, clearly. Yeah. That need to be addressed. Um, but yeah, so that's what happens. So that's, a, yeah, this is like the, <laughs> the breaking point. And then Groden like kidnaps him and takes him to dinosaur. Yeah, Groden goes complete psycho. Well, when does Mary Steen like, Virgin get... Murder in his eyes. She gets a... a, a, a sexually assaulted by her boss well this was that's that was in, before we didn't mention that That was at the dinner oh that was after the dinner okay. yeah she's driving so, her home in the limo yeah and then like, it was and it doesn't it, even matter because she never shows up in the movie after you know the explosion of the I think there's one shot the of her end. but yeah so <laughs> she's gone to hang out with the dog it was kind of funny that yeah, she went to where the dog went <laughs> it's funny because it's not that it's funny that she she's pushing him off as he's trying to kiss her but she pulls the wig off and he's mm. like oh, put that back on and then mm. in the next scene he has a brand new wig that's like a ponytail yeah she tosses it out the window <laughs> oh right right, right. and then the, the big presentation so he's left charles groden like two days to do this like you know complete redesign uh it doesn't even look at the new plans or anything he's just uh it, you know the press are all there sure it's, it's like fine. this big presentation he's gonna give you know you'd want to look over the plans before you, you do something more concerned about his hair yeah <laughs> Yeah, he looks like Rick Baker. He's got this beard in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> he does look he like does. Rick Baker. <laughs> Minus the earring. It's a real 90s uh, power businessman ponytail. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, so as we mentioned, it blows up and Charles Grodin is pushed over the edge. So he decides to take Clifford to Dinosaur World. Yeah, and it's kind of set up earlier that he designed, I think, one of the... Uh, the ride. That Larry the on. Scary Rex ride or yeah, something. Yeah, because he's a architect. An, an architect. Um, and because of that, he gets in free into Dinosaur well, World whenever he wants. While it's closed. The yeah. Dinosaur World, it's, it's the middle of the night. Um, the security guard recognizes him. Yeah. He's like, hey, hey, uh, George or whatever. Let, let, you me know, let me in. I'll take full responsibility. Okay. Yeah. So now we're in a, an abandoned Dinosaur World. And this is where the movie gets really weird. It's just all the... It's very fantastical. It's like all these like uh, map paintings. But it's almost like the movie wasn't really it didn't have this kind of kind of like a little childish tone to it up until no, now. No, like Tim Burton is what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, Tim yeah. Burton, exactly. It gets a little dark here. It, it kind of shifts, but it's dark, but also like, Tim Burton-esque, like mm-hmm. whimsical with like do 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 and yeah. he's like riding this roller coaster and it goes on forever. Yeah, he keeps it's cranking <laughs> he keeps cranking up the speed. Yeah. Larry the scary Rex. That looks like a fun ride. I'd want to go on. You yeah, get to shoot it, it with a good. laser. For I, I have to say for like a movie ride, it's pretty well realized. They had pretty good animatronics, right? Yeah, and they go into like detail. Usually these things are just like, yeah, whatever, just Put some flying bats or something. Yeah. <laughs> Blah! <laughs> oh. Behold the terrors of age! <laughs> yeah, so Charles Grodin is like, oh, I'm going to put it in hyperdrive or something and cranks and it up. And he's just like smiling maniacally like he's lost it. And then the ride breaks down and, you know, the dinosaur goes crazy. Its skin peels off its face. And it's like this big robot <laughs> yeah, And then dinosaur. it's like scary. Like it's... it's a- Seeing this as a child, I think, scarred me for life. I actually looked it up <laughs> online, and uh, somebody was selling the actual prop head of the, oh. of the Larry the Scary Rex with all the skin ripped off. So it's like the mechanical. It's... What would somebody do with that? Where were they? I don't, are you like telling a me like that's still preserved now? Like how did it not like? Doesn't like that material like rot? Well, it wouldn't be foam. Like it looked. It's probably rigid, like yeah, wood and stuff like that, so. spray painted to look like metal. Well, we should buy that. <laughs> buying that it's how probably, much is it uh, i didn't see the price it's probably if i had to take a guess i would say three thousand uh, dollars i'd probably say more than that maybe like 10 grand or something God, for clifford props <laughs> you can buy like star wars props for less than that 
Um, I could buy Kenny Baker from Star Wars. For, yeah, for we're going to have to. Well, we'll give you an update on what the price of the dinosaur head is. I'll look it up. <laughs> Maybe I'll surprise you for your birthday. Also, we didn't mention oh, we didn't <laughs> mention that Clifford carries around a dinosaur this entire movie. Maybe we kind of mentioned it in passing. We at mentioned a little beginning. bit at the beginning. He yeah. kind of talks to it. He's never without it, and he's always talking to it. It's yeah. like, you know. And he also plays a flute the entire time. Yeah. A, recorder. a recorder. That was funny to me because a recorder is like the most annoying uh, instrument. <laughs> In, in, so in, do kids well, still play recorders? Because it was like the law that people, me and April's age, yeah. had to play recorders and at I, school. My parents yeah. had to buy one. We all had to buy one. Yeah. So I think I have one like in my childhood I home never played, somewhere. It's not the most annoying instrument. Well, what's the most annoying? Uh, bagpipes. Bagpipes? Okay. I guess I could understand that. It's very shrill. But uh, hey. yeah, I, again, the whole recorder thing, I think that they were just like, this will be funny. Let's just have him randomly <laughs> play the recorder. It's just a kid thing. It makes him look like a little child. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, the ride goes haywire and Clifford is like hanging off the ride that's like about to fall down and probably kill him. Yeah, the the... T-Rex monster, it's uh, it's like chomping at his feet. And something else falls into it and gets eaten and destroyed. Yeah. And so Charles Grodin has to decide whether to save him. And then it's really funny, like, saves him. And then just, just like starts screaming at him about how much of an asshole he is and he's like i hate, I hate you. you you're like a hateful destructive child well, as 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 he deserves you know yeah. clifford deserves a but there's uh, no there's no kind of like reckoning or uh i don't know conclusion conclusion between the two of them he just the scene ends with him just saying like you're a horrible piece of shit and everybody's gonna hate you and it's no wonder you like the movie ends with essentially charles groden still feeling that yeah. way <laughs> basically Clifford. yeah and i think that's another reason why they did the wraparound because they were like we gotta give this movie some kind of mm -hmm. um not necessarily a moral but like a uh uh, resolution yeah you know? so yeah and then we come back to the future 20 the year 2050 and we're talking to mm -hmm. uh clifford now looks like a rotting corpse yeah and, and he's, he's saying like, <laughs> you know did you ever speak to your uncle again and he said he wouldn't speak to me for years and i think he he's what does he say he's like i realize that i can't be i can't be mean to everybody like i can't i shouldn't be a jerk to everyone like mm -hmm. i can't control everyone in my life and i decided to change and i wrote a letter to him what was it Two, like hundreds of letters 287 letters or something yeah and then finally <laughs> he says that mary seen virgin gets in touch with him and then it cuts to their wedding their wedding and he's the ring bearer because he said that earlier in the movie but like so charles groden like doesn't want to forgive him clearly mary steam virgin just made him i don't think they have any they utter any words to one another no but, but he does kiss no him. they don't mary steam virgin gives him a kiss on the cheek and then she makes charles groden give him a kiss on the cheek and it's mm. so it's so well awkward. that's a callback to what happened when they first met he like <laughs> i don't know if you saw that he like leans forward and then he just shakes his hand but he gets him to kiss his face oh, okay, the, the, okay. The, at the wedding <laughs> Which is funny. And then, like, yeah, it goes back to the priest, and he's just like, uh, okay, Ben Savage, you're not going to be bad boy anymore, are you? Yeah. No, and that's it. And then he, like, he says no, and then he goes back in, and then he pulls out the little dinosaur oh. toy. And he's like, mission accomplished, Stefan, or something like that. Yeah. End movie. Which is cute. Uh, this movie is amazing. It's a really, really good movie. It's not quite as and disturbing as I thought it would be. Like... I do feel like if more people watched it now, they'd probably appreciate give it, it. Uh, give it a, a bit much more favorable review than mm -hmm. when it came out. Sometimes it just takes a long time for movies. Yeah, to be just appreciated. like Freddie got fingered. <laughs> hey, that's still that waiting on that a, one. That has like a resurgence in some communities, but oh yeah, that movie's very funny. I can't get through it. Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> yeah. But like, also, uh, I was thinking a lot of the Cable Guy when this when I was watching this, yeah. which is another movie that was hated when it came out. Even yeah. though I, <laughs> you almost I, ruined yeah. Jim Carrey's career. I always loved the Cable Guy, so I was on the right side of history on that. But that's another movie about a weird guy torturing a, a, a you know normal guy really who didn't do anything wrong mm -hmm. and i feel like that doesn't sit well with a lot of audiences which again i totally how do you get think it, the cable but... guy would have been if it w was chris farley 
as it was supposed to well, be. Well, I think it would have been a little more heartwarming, and like I think people mm. would probably have liked it more. Uh, well, mm. I mean, Chris Farley can uh, be annoying too, but he's a different kind of annoying than Jim Carrey. He's very lovable. <laughs> he's more lovable. Yeah. Yes, I Jim agree. Carrey is very kind of disturbed and off-putting in that movie. Yeah, uh, but I think he's hilarious because I think Jim Carrey is hilarious, mm. and I think Martin Short's hilarious. <laughs> so that's why this works for me. If only Jim Carrey and Martin Short could get together for some kind of buddy comedy. The four amigos. <laughs> oh no, Eddie Murphy's there now, and Arnold Short. <laughs> I just remembered Martin Short was in uh, one of those Santa Claus movies. That's right, he I was ne- Jack Frost. I, I think. never saw it, it though. It was the like the third or fourth one. Uh, yeah, I think it was the third one. <laughs> there is no fourth Santa no? Claus I don't movie. Know. Oh, we can only dream. Oh, there will be. Uh, Tim Allen's uh, more popular Martin than Martin Short ever. is also in a Paul Anderson movie, yeah. Inherent Vice. I was Vice. Just going to say that. He's in oh, Inherent yeah, Vice for like right. one, one scene. He was really but, good in that scene. And I remember yeah. being shocked that he showed up because I hadn't heard about him. A movie, movie that I did not like, but, you know, I does wasn't crazy have... About it. It's like... If you took a bunch of scenes from that movie and watched them like individually, not in that movie, they're good. But together, it, that movie just confused me. Mm. And I'm a big P.T. Anderson fan. Um, wait, did you say Paul W.S. Anderson earlier? <laughs> no, I didn't. But that's a perfect transition into what we're doing on our Patreon we this week. We just got Paul W.S. Anderson on the brain because yeah. uh, we uh, recorded a Patreon episode, patreon.com slash no such thing as a bad movie, uh, about Monster Hunter. <laughs> then <laughs> <laughs> You can hear the excitement in April's voice. About this new brand new Paul W.S. Anderson movie starring Mila Jovovich. Uh, and yeah, if you're on the $5 level, um, you can get access to that. That'll be out next week. And, uh, we release a little bonus episode every two weeks and wait, and we're so close to, uh, hitting 200, which will trigger us doing a Q and a episode, yep, right? We've got a, a new Q and a episode where we'll take questions, uh, from Twitter, from Patreon, uh, from everywhere. And, uh, we'll record that and it will be le- released exclusively on Patreon. If you go back into our back catalog, we did one like two years ago or like a year and a half ago for our one year anniversary we've been doing this for over two years now you guys um isn't that crazy Mm -hmm. i've learned nothing since we started (laughs) no but you're uh, the paul ws anderson of (laughs) podcast oh no how dare you call it that hurts my feelings if you're on the fence uh consider joining the patreon uh five dollars uh will get you the exclusive content and two dollars uh will get you uh to be submitted into the bad movie lottery to pick an episode uh every few months (laughs) uh, which we have we ever talked about a movie on patreon that we're like we like this movie uh little italy comes to mind uh No, that was the main episode, no, wasn't no, it? No, that was a Patreon. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, well, we're getting to the point in the podcast now where I don't even remember like if we've done things. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> well, back when we used to do two episodes, two movies an episode, Ugh. we really burned through a lot of movies that like I can't even remember anything about. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we're also on Twitter at No Such Thing Pod. You can email us at No Such Thing as a Bad Movie at gmail dot com. And if you want to check me out on Twitter or Instagram or Letterboxd uh, or YouTube, I'm at April Atmansky. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter, DeClouj, D-C-L-O-U-X, letter J. I'm also on the YouTubes under Film Trap, and I make videos. Check it out. Subscribe. Please. Please. <laughs> he needs mm, subscribers. So people. desperate. Um, I'm <laughs> yeah, on Twitter. They're going to take my home. I'm on Twitter. Oh, I wish I had a home. I'm on Twitter, uh, Sergeant Zima, S-G-T-Z-I-M-A. And uh, I also forgot to mention that uh, you can rent Clifford. <laughs> it's always so anticlimactic when Colin is. What am I supposed to say? Uh, you can rent Clifford from iTunes uh, in Canada, um, and I think you can rent it off uh, YouTube as well. As well, so it is available, and apparently there's a Blu-ray. Of it, it was like four ninety nine. It was pretty good. Uh, it looked like the new transfer. Actually, great quality. Yeah. Colin, you have to say like, hey, you could. You should subscribe to my newsletter, Colin's Corner, where I talk about my favorite corners. <laughs> favorite corners? There's a lot of corners in our house, and we got a lot to say about it, people. But which one's his favorite? Ooh. You won't know unless you subscribe Ooh, to Colin's Corner. This corner. Ooh. <laughs> oh, well, no. that's it. That's it for this week. Thanks for dropping by. I'm April Lansky. I'm Justin the Glue. <laughs> I'm Colin Cunningham. And Thanks remember, for dropping by. <laughs> there's no such thing as a bad movie.